What is up, guys, and good morning. Welcome back to Brass Ring Media. We are here today to talk about some contracts that are coming up, um, some shuffling that's going around between different companies, um, and then take a look at some comments that Tony Khan made um, via Busted Open's interview uh, that he did with Dave LaGreca. I believe it was yesterday. If I believe it, they did it yesterday. If not yesterday, then a day before, um, but I watched it last night. Um, it's very fresh, very recent, this week regardless. Um, but before we get into all that, I just want to say, as always, thank you so much for checking out the show here. Um, I am normally, when it comes to Brass Ring Media, live here every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, this weekend, um, I will not be live. Um, I had a previous to, or I have to attend to. Um, and then I'm still trying to go to Bad Blood. I looked... I didn't buy tickets originally because I didn't know if I was going to be able to get off of work. Um, I have two jobs, so one job is easy to take off of. Some The other one is, like, pulling teeth sometimes. Um, but I So I didn't buy my tickets originally. Um, so, and when I looked at tickets, I think it was yesterday, too. Yeah, it was a busy day yesterday. Um, but I was trying to figure out, like, the, the next schedule or the schedule and then the layout for the next few weeks, rather. I looked at the tickets, and, bro, guys, like, it is insane. I'm talking nosebleed seats. The cheapest that I saw, um, and again, I, I maybe spent like 10, 10 minutes, not even, um, just trying to, because I was waiting for dinner, um, just shuffling through some tickets to see what's available for Bad Blood in Atlanta, obviously on October 5th. And nosebleed seats, y'all, like the cheapest one that I, I saw was like $212. And it was hard, hard cam side, obviously nosebleed upper upper deck. Um, and that was like 212 And I'm pretty sure they had all all. I actually am not 100% certain because I normally uh, hit the little toggle to include fees. So I know like, exactly what I'm paying. Nothing worse, y'all. When you see a $100 ticket, you put that in your, I, I try not to cuss here. You put that thing in your cart and then you go to pay and it's like almost, it's double because of the fees and all that crap. It's just like, what are we doing? Um, But long winded story Um, and short to get to the point here. Scheduling wise, um, I am hopefully going to be attending Bad Blood um, if I can find a cheap ticket. Um, so the live show for October 5th will not be happening, but I will obviously be doing some content around that as well. Um, but that's why I want to sit down here today and just kind of chat. And obviously we're not live, which is, sucks. I miss you guys. But I wanted to talk about some things that are going on. And then, of course, like I said, the interview that Tony Khan had did with Busted Open. I was looking for a transcription, but no one... Um, no sites that I've seen have, have transcribed the entire interview. I guess it wasn't that newsworthy. Uh, but I was mainly listening to it and intrigued to, to seek it out because I wanted to see how he was going to address all the crazy stuff that's happened, right? Um, with the bag angle, the needle, all this stuff. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to see how he was going to comment on it or even address it. So we get to that in, in a little bit here. Uh, but I want to get to the big news. Um, I, maybe big news, maybe not big news, depending on, on your viewpoint. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen. I know the logo may block out some of it. Um, but some big contract news. And we're, we're like I said, we're going to start with that and knock that out of the park. And the first one is with Miro. Miro has been one of those talents with AEW that is just come and go. You know, you'll see him. Maybe for a month, maybe, maybe for a month. You'll see him for a couple weeks. Um, if that, and then he's just gone. Obviously, he had some personal stuff going on. Um, so I hope everything's good in that regard. You know what I mean? The the split with blanking on name, Lana. Um, so yeah, obviously he's had some things going on. I don't know if it was a, a visa issue from time to time. So again, I'm not gonna cast too much shade or blame on one side or the other at this time, but I think it's like a collective. Uh, just from what we do know and me making my own opinion here based off of the speculation of, and the information that we do have, I would just, I would just say it's a, a loss loss for both sides. I think that Miro could have had just, I'm not going to say a main event run, like a, a like a, become like a superstar or anything like that um, for AEW. But I think especially in the time frame when he came in, because he debuted in AEW in 2020, the landscape was very different, very different. And the hype was there. Yes, they had um, more people in the main event scene. And that's why I said, so maybe he wouldn't necessarily have skyrocketed or like, you know, like trailblaze or anything crazy like that. Uh, but he could have been a very solid upper upper carter you know what i mean a main event guy potentially even a heavyweight champion at one point depending on the build and and the and the focus that you put behind him i think he could have been a beast you know i was a big fan of miro i thought that he when he left wwe and he was coming to aw i was like oh here we go it's just you know it's 
I felt like he was going to be one of those talents that was going to come over with just like a real big chip on their shoulder and just be like balls to the wall. Let's go. And the rumblings that we've heard have been, you know, creative differences and they can't get on the same page creatively, which I think is just so bizarre. You know what I mean? Like I, uh, and I part of me is even hesitant to really like kind of go in depth on that, but it's like, just kind of long story short, like to me, man, like that shouldn't even be a thing. Like at the end, end of the day, like Tony Khan is your boss, you know what I mean? And you're, he's paying you to do a service. So you got to do that service. You know what I mean? Obviously there's parameters and things like that, but like, if it's, what we've heard of him just not wanting to go out there and take a loss or anything like that. That's just kind of crazy to me because everyone loses and everyone should lose. That's you gain more sometimes out of losing than out of winning. Now, granted, obviously if he was Tony Khan wanted to go out there and, and have him like lose to and like job to everybody, that's completely different, but no, I highly doubt that would have been the case. So I would love to have known what stories were pitched that weren't agreed upon um what both sides wanted to do and the other side disagreed on um i highly doubt we'll probably get any of that tony khan doesn't comment on anything and everything's always great so i <laughs> pretty confident we're not going to get it from his his side depending on what happens with miro maybe um but yeah it's just really unfortunate at the end of the day like at the end of the day it doesn't even really matter you know like who what where when how the main thing is why. Why didn't it happen? And what can we do from here going out? Or going on, rather. You know what I mean? So Miro requested his release from AEW. He wants to be out. He no longer wants to be employed with, with all elite wrestling. So I'll read the article here really quick. Uh, per Fightful Select is believed that Miro has requested his release from AEW, although as of yet, it's unclear whether re the request has been granted. Um... The report goes on to note that while he was initially sidelined longer than expected, Mira has been healthy for some time, with there even being ideas floated around for him. Internally, it was wondered whether he'd have involvement in the Casino Gauntlet match at All In, and the 38-year-old himself is believed to have pitched working with John Moxley, although this didn't come to be. Of course you would. Like, why wouldn't you want to pitch to be involved with one of the top stars? Or <laughs> come on, bro. Now, if that was shot down, like I, 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 I don't blame TK. Like bro like where have you been like how how do i just i mean and again granted there's a lot of things that happen on on tv aw tv that were like wtf like how make this make sense but this one would have been no before i even say it you could have gone a route where like you depending on what role you want mox to have if you want mox to be a good guy you could have had mira come in and just completely decimate him um or you could have had mira come in and save brian and or try to save brian you know what i mean so it depends on what route they wanted to go or they would have wanted to go with in regards to that. But I I mean, come on, bro. That's a little, that's a little steep. You've been gone for how long and you want to work on box coming back. Like I do too. Shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. Who doesn't? Um, should the departure happen? Many fans will have questions regarding whether WWE has have interest in the man formerly known as Rusev on this playful note. Um, that this is unknown at this stage and that mirror has mirror signed a deal with AEW in 2022 that runs until spring of 2026. So here renewed in 22. And then obviously that extension runs until spring of next year. So my guy still has some, <clears throat> excuse me, still has some time on his contract. So that sucks for him. If he really does one out, I, I would kind of be surprised if, if Tony Khan would release mirror just because, you know, he's going to want to go straight to WWE, just like a punk, you know what I mean? So situation. So if I was Tony Khan, I, you know, I could see him not wanting to, but, in the same token, too, Miro is not a CM Punk. In no disrespect, it's just a fact. And not many people are. Um, so I don't know if, if there would be really... It, I think it would just be more the uh, the perception of it. More so the impact it would have on like the product itself, if that makes sense. I think maybe more personally and like an ego, it would it would affect Tony Khan more than anything business-wise, I would say maybe long-term. And I don't honestly know how that works. I don't know. I would love to know if, if any of you guys watching have any insight, feel free to drop it in the comments or follow me on Twitter at kickashpodcast underscore, which is my podcast. Um, or you can reach out to me personally at A-S-H-M-A-N-N-S. Uh, but better yet, you can just comment on this video and we can get back to you that way too. Um, but in the sense that I don't know when you ask for your release, how like financially that works out. So obviously he has what, a little less than a year left. So since he's technically asking, well, not technically, since he's asking for his release, 
I don't see why Tony Khan would have to pay him for an additional year, right? Or or he would be obligated to pay him, rather. Sometimes, like, for instance, when uh, a talent's being fired, the, what there to be, right? We all know about the 90-day clause. They pay you for 90 days. You sit home, do nothing. You still collect your check, da-da-da. Uh, so I don't know what kind of structure AEW has or just how that would work in general. Um, but, yeah, I, I think it would be... Look, you're not doing with the guy in you're not doing anything with the guy anyways, right? So why continue to pay him, especially for another year? Yes, you may be getting a, a good amount of money from your next TV rights deal deal to you and you're a billionaire, so whatever. Yes, like billionaires and millionaires have money to throw but like you don't become a billionaire or a millionaire by throwing your money around. You know what I mean? So I think that this may be one that Tony Khan maybe doesn't make just like a quick reaction on. I think this one may be one, not that saying that he does, because I don't obviously know, but I think this one may, he may sit on and, and, and marinate on for a little bit longer. Um, if I had to take a guess, but do I think he would go back to AEW? He being Miro a hundred percent. Do I think that they necessarily need him right now? No, I don't. And I think that that's, and again, I was a, a big Miro fan and, and, sitting here right now like i'm not that pressed to see him back in wwe i don't even really see where he would fit to be honest with you like yeah he could be a fun foil for maybe like a gunther but gunther is a bad guy rusev i maybe you would have rusev come back in as a good guy um of course he would probably get cheered so you would that may be the smarter route anyway but i don't know i don't know i i'm not eagerly like i haven't been sitting here like oh man i can't wait for mirror to be done at aew so he can go back to wwe but i'm not sitting here saying that if he does go back to wwe or if and when he does go back i that i'm gonna be like throwing the my remote and stuff like that you know um so we'll see that, that that's a, it's gonna be an interesting one in my opinion to see what ends up happening with that but i'm not surprised <laughs> i'm not surprised at all speaking of contracts the next one that we have we'll stick with aew here just this one should be a little quick and then we'll move over um well not move over but we'll touch on the uh wwe one ricky starks reportedly has not been backstage at aew and is still but is still believed to be under contract which that's not surprising um he's last wrestled for aew on the march 30th edition of collision and pretty much no sightings since then fightful select did report that excuse me ricky does remain under contract with aew uh, but again he has not been backstage as of late obviously interest is huge in wwe again this uh, this one to me is just a matter of time and i've been saying this for <laughs> since him and cody first linked up um and and when i first saw him what was one of the pandemic shows because he was he he came in i'm pretty certain um as one of the the open challenges that cody was doing for the tnt title during the pandemic days if i'm not mistaken um if not then then around that time and i just remember thinking like this dude is just something special man like again not saying he's gonna be like like the face of a company type but he could be he has the charisma he has the look he has the charm he has the way of words like he's just and his style too like he's He's a, a fresh guy. You know, he dresses superb, but he doesn't look like your average other guy, right? Like, he's not your Cody Rhodes going out there. Cody Rhodes looks great in his suits, right? Like, that's, uh, like, one of the things about Cody, his suits, right? Cody always looks very dapper in his suits. He always looks very well put together. Ricky Starks always looks like a million bucks. He always looks like, man, like, he can make just, like, a regular button-down t-shirt look like a, look like it, that shit was like three, four hundred dollars. You know what I mean? So just something about that guy exudes a star presence. And to me, it's just it, this. This one is really baffling to me that Tony Khan didn't capitalize on more. And again, the fact that Ricky Starks has been sitting since March, not doing anything is try not to curse. It's just absolutely absurd to me. So and again, Ricky has, has even made comments that he's not injured. He hasn't been injured and he hasn't turned anything down. So I, I don't know what's going on. And Tony Khan had made a comment a couple months ago that he would love to he would love to have he said something like he would love to have Ricky Starks back on TV or something to that effect. And it's like, my dude, like you literally write the script. <laughs> like you can literally bring him in. So this one previously when I was talking about Miro, you don't really know where to put the blame on. For me, on this one, again, unless something comes to light, this one is an L for AEW in my book. Like, if you, not if, when this guy gets free from AEW, and not free in, like, a, 
not relax, guys. Um, because I'm not that that type where it's one side versus the other side, but free in a sense of not like being stuck at home and not being able to work like that. Like, and granted, he's still getting a, probably a nice paycheck, so he's still getting his his money. So can't feel but for so, but so bad for him, right? But wrestling is in for me too. Like I. I couldn't imagine, like, I, we all joked that, you, you know, like, we would just, like, love to just, like, vacation and just, like, you know, pretty much just, like, vacation and get paid, right? I, to me, I have my limit. Even, like, when I take, like, this past, uh, what was it, last month, my, 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 my best friend came down from Virginia, and during, like, right after, I, so I was off almost about two weeks, and, man, I was getting to the point, I was like, all right, I gotta be active, I gotta be, not active in the sense that we were just laying around because we were literally doing stuff every day but active in the sense of working like i'm just a very like work driven person so if ricky is anything like me like yeah like thankfully like he's probably you know blessed out that you're getting your paycheck and that's not a question but you've got to be going stir crazy and yes you can go to the gym and do stuff like that but it's like yo like it's not even like AEW has a, a performance center that he can go and just like run the ropes in and just like stay active in that regard so it's like where is he supposed to go and maybe I'm sure he could do like independent bookings, but I don't know. It, again, it's, it's all very, very subjective. I don't know. I, you know, we all know rather that AEW allows their talents to go in. Um, well, he's not a good example anymore. Um, but they, we all know that they're allowed to go from different promotions, right. And, and work. So in a sense, and, and since Ricky isn't, that's I think telling as well. And and if I was him, I, I'd probably be like, Look, I'm going to sit I'd probably be like, at this point, I'm just going to save my body, going to keep in shape, stay, you know, stay ready so you don't have to get ready type mentality. But like, I'm going to save my bum card, as they say, for WWE. So um, I don't blame him, you know, like, and again, if it comes out that like TK, Tony Khan has pitched him like 10 different stories and he just like poo pooed on all 10, then it's like, all right, you know, like you had the opportunity, like we all do things that we don't want to do. <laughs> Right now, yes, it is different. These people are being blasted on TV, millions of people. Um, so I understand that, um, or I can appreciate that. But at the same token, too, a lot of the BS that a lot of the wrestlers have gone through have actually been like blessings in disguise, too. So that's why I'm I'm just in the in the camp of I think AEW really dropped the ball on Ricky Starks, and I think that. It's just really, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. So I personally can't wait for him to show up. At, and I would love for him to go to NXT too. A lot of people crap on NXT in, in that regard, but I think he would be perfect in NXT for maybe a year, eight months to a year. Nothing crazy. I think he should definitely be the NXT champion. And I think he should run that, well, that brand for the majority of his duration there. Just come in with the impact and with the bang and just hit the ground running. Uh, and then you could go from there. You know what I mean? Depending on when he comes in, you can, again, there's so many, there's a lot you can do with, with Ricky Sarks. And I love the history that he has with Cody, not saying you're going to, again, like it's like a crazy, not saying you're going to, uh, after he goes from NXT to the main roster, immediately feud with Cody Rhodes. Absolutely not. But I think it'd be cool to kind of get like a, like a segment here or two, just like them brushing shoulders in the back or something like that. So I think that'd be pretty cool. And then you can build from there and go long-term. So Sky's the limit for Ricky Starks, and I'm not concerned about his wrestling career. I'm just bummed. You know what I mean? I'm just bummed that we've been we've been deprived of Ricky, man. Um, and it's a travesty. It really is. Um, but the last thing in regards to, or I'm sorry, not there's two more that we have here. Another big one, um, kind of playing off of the AEW and WWE blend is the Lucha Bros. There are a good amount of reports out there that um it's pretty much a done deal that the lucha bros have signed multi-year deals with wwe and they're believed to be heading to the main roster this one now i was just saying in, the, in regards to the whole nxt thing this one makes sense if they go straight to the main roster especially with the tag division and nxt not really where it once was it is nxt is just a weird it's a weird like brand you know in a weird land like if they were to go into NXT, I think they would effing kill it, you know? But I think that when you're a tag team, it's it's slightly different. Uh, I think that especially when you're a tag team like the Lucha Bros, they are just, just like, signed, sealed, and delivered for the main roster. Now, again, I, do, I always mention what AJ Styles has said, that even though he went straight to the main roster, he would have loved to go through NXT. I think that the Lucha, that there's a case that could be made for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you could even... 
make a make a case for them staying down there for a couple months and then go into the main roster. But I don't know. I to me they I could see them on SmackDown <laughs> very very soon. Um, and the masks alone, the fact that AEW never made replica masks for these guys boggles my mind. And I'm not going to get on the whole AEW merch and lack thereof uh, soapbox because that'd be a a whole separate, like an hour plus, <laughs> it could be. Um, but yeah, they left thousands and thousands of dollars on the table, minimum on that one. So you already know, WWE, if it's even close to being a signed deal, you already know WWE has done the models and the blueprints for those masks. I can already see the action figures with Pinto with that, um, when you're the Joker face paint, I can already see like these guys are going to be caked just off merch alone and good for them good for them the matches that we could get as a tag team and then individually like it kind of gives me goosebumps just sitting here thinking about it we have within the next year we have to get a one-on-one match between ray <laughs> ray and ray phoenix and ray mysterio like what's like can you imagine like uh, it gives me goosebumps like i said um, for them i think be i think they're they're one of those talents it's just you look at them and they 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 feel like a, a WWE superstar. You know, as, as corny as that is to say, like there's just a different connotation for that and a different vibe. And I think that the Lucha Bros have that for sure. And it's just literally just a matter of time now. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to see them go straight to the main roster and just effing kill it. Last part of the... Oh, I'll close out the wrong one. Last part of the contract talk is in regards to Kevin Owens. Big KO. Uh, back in May, Kevin Owens revealed that he had less than nine months left on his WWE contract, which is crazy because I remember tweeting just yesterday, it felt like, um, when he signed that big multi-year deal and he got his back. So it's crazy we're at that time already. Um, but it falls, his expiry date it falls around February of 2025, offering an update last month, offering... Okay, that was worded weird. Offering an update last, um, I guess regarding last month or in last month, the prize fighter revealed that there have been no change to his contract status, and reports are now suggesting that the co- the company have started communication with regard to offering him an extension to the forty year old. Uh, <laughs> I always catch them if they put the age in there. Per Fightful Select, it is believed that KO has been approached by WWE for a new contract, with it said that a new deal hasn't been signed yet. WWE sources tell. Okay, whatever. Uh, same thing. Uh-uh. Fightful also says they spoke, or those that we spoke to in AEW said that the company has long had major interest in bringing in Owens. If he's available, they're expected to make him an offer if he reaches free agency, so no no surprise there. I am i don't want that, guys. I'm, I'm not sitting here eagerly, eagerly anticipating KO going to AEW. I think he's just going to be another one that gets lost in the shuffle. Yes, there could be a little bit of saving grace for him since his relationship with the Bucks and things like that. But we don't even see the Bucks on TV. So it's like, what are we that much? So I, I'm just, I feel like he would come in quote unquote hot for maybe a month. And then he would just kind of blend in with everyone else. And I think KO is too good for that. KO's mic skills are too good for that. His brain is too good for that. Um, I think he needs to stay in WWE. I, being selfish, maybe I, I think that it's just the home for him. You know, um, yes, like if if he wants, and there could be a case of he's done everything in WWE. He's kind of gotten a little bit complacent, a little bit stale. What else is he gonna do? Yeah, if he turns heel, he's done that fifty times. Like, what is there really left to do? So it could just be a a, a case of him wanting to just change up the landscape and the scenery. Go to AEW for a couple years, three years, and then go back to WWE type thing. But And okay, but I'm just not, they just, and again, Kevin Owens isn't one of those that I'd be concerned about or anything like that, that he would lose his his star power. Yes, he wouldn't be, I think he would in a sense, because he wouldn't be featured prominently on TV, but I I think he would be one of those where like the second he would come back to WWE, it'd be like all is well, (laughs) you know? So I wouldn't be concerned in that regard. I would just be kind of like, all right, man, like. I, to me, it would end up being one of those situations where the grass isn't always greener just because – just in the sense that he would – I strongly feel that he would get lost in the shuffle. And I just – I want better for him. And I, I, I just – I and again, not a knock on AEW. There's just too too many moving pieces, too many moving parts, too many people on and off TV. Um, 
just the consistency. And again, WWE is, is not much better in, in a lot of regards. They give a lot of cheap finishes. So I'm not, again, knocking one and, and praising the other or just ignoring the other. Again, and it's one of those things, too, where just because it's done in one company doesn't make it right. You know, like we can fix this. So, again, uh, I just think with Kevin that he needs to not needs. That's wrong word. I think with Kevin, um, it's just going to be a, a matter of what he wants to do story wise and, and character wise and, and what he wants to do creatively. Um, but. I just, I just don't think he would be, he would be a great fit in AEW maybe two years ago, three years ago, but not right now. It's just too, there's just too much. And I think, and again, like I could be wrong. He could come in and, and feud with like your Ospreys, your Okada. And again, there would be a ton of killer matches, a ton of killer promos, stuff like that. But my main concern is just the time, the time. If he gets that time and he's treated as a big deal, hundred percent let's let's go you know balls to the wall type thing but i just have a bad feeling he'd be one of those be hot for a month and then be collision missing whatever you know what i mean and i just i just and the way kevin owens loves wrestling like i just feel like he would get very frustrated with that and again acting like i know this guy right but um just what we know from interviews and like just how he is as a as a wrestler you know i i think that it could be a little bit too stagnant for him um, but that is the last bit of contract news that I had. And again, just a couple, again, there was no transcription, but a couple things in regards to the interview that he, that he, uh, Tony Khan did on busted open with Dave LaBreca. He was uh, in studio this past or a couple days ago. I was really looking forward to his feedback and what he was going to say in regards to the whole suffocation angle with the bag the needle, things like that. And again, not to keep harping on it, but this is the first really opportunity that I, I that I'm aware of that he's had to sit down literally and, and talk about stuff. And it was so I shouldn't have, but it was just so disappointing. So he goes in, I'm not gonna obviously go word the word because I didn't take notes. I figured I'd be able to find a transcription, silly me. Uh, but it obviously wasn't that big of a deal. But he just everything is great. You know, everything is great in AEW, everything everyone's great. Uh, the 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 first god like 10 minutes it felt like he was just praising brian danielson like i was like okay we get it like brian's the best in your eyes like okay we understand like can we change the subject and it wasn't even like he didn't even really reference the whole suffocation it wasn't like a it wasn't kayfabe i guess we can say right it wasn't like always oh, playing up you know if the concern and the that feeling of oh no you know like i'm really concerned for brian's safety and he's going to be able to come back and things like that just like almost like a tongue-in-cheek like oh oh if brian's cleared haha <laughs> wink wink like come on dude like you sold you sold your your fake injury better than this major angle you know what should be this major deal you know like and to me everyone like he was just brushing it under the under the bridge you know water under the bridge type thing like yeah they did you know it, it happened and he didn't reference at all like how he or what he needed to do to like even attempting to play up the the repercussions and the consequences for Mox. This guy literally strangled, tried to strangle, well, not strangle, suffocate, wrong word. This guy literally tried to suffocate your world champion. This guy, for the first 10 minutes of, of that interview, you were just praising and gushing over. And you have no, like, oh, Mox was fine. Mox was disciplined. And we tried to keep him out, but he threatened us. All that, like, nothing, nothing. I'm just like, what are we doing? Like, this was your prime moment to be like, to really ham it up. And because Dave LaGreca is the perfect guy for that. Dave loves wrestling. He is very passionate. So he absolutely would have fed into it and would have just gone along with the story. Because that's the whole point, right? Man, like you, you would have thought it was just like a, just like a regular uppercut. They threw Brian into the ring post, maybe blooded him up. And then just a regular day in AEW. I was just so disappointed, y'all so disappointed he really left a lot on the table there too he in the whole like the the story with nigel and i was a little disappointed with with dave i will say um david just did the, like this rant like i think last week regarding the lack of build 
in in the lack of of telling the story and then he just really let tony Khan off the hook he you know he they did reference the the history and the and the call back to terry Funk with the suffocation angle uh, with the bag um, and then the history that Nigel and Brian Danielson have been Ring of Honor, how they're one, like, if in Dave's eyes, it's, they're the greatest Ring of Honor feud, which is fine, like, everyone has their, that's not the problem, but I thought, and I kind of was hoping that Dave would have, like, held Tony's feet to the fire a little bit more, and be like, you know, like, the, and I guess it's kind of tricky, too, because it's like, are we, is this kayfabe, like, how, like, I don't know, it's just, like, a weird thing, and I guess I would need to know, the parameters again going into it um and and how to ask certain questions and what scope are kind of looking under but man i was just it was just pretty much just like another pr like aew is great everything's fine no big deal the needle thing the suffocation no big deal so i was just really disappointed about it. but I, I really would love to know everyone's thoughts on that so if, if you do check out the interview drop it in the comments here and let me know what you think and and if i'm at, if i'm just being too hard on it um or i just expected too much and they did mention, uh, bring up the, the TV rights deal, and Tony Khan mentioned something to the effect of he didn't bring his shades into the Busted Open Studios, but um, uh, the future is so bright for AEW that he would need them. Uh, and it's pr it's pretty much a guarantee they're staying on TNT, TBS, like with Warner Brothers, uh, and it's just going to be a matter of announcing it, which I would assume they're going to do on their five-year um, AEW or Dynamite 5, I think that's what they're tagging it as. And I think that's next week. Two weeks from now, if I'm not mistaken. Two weeks from now, I think. Um, so yeah, I I wouldn't be it wouldn't be a surprise there. And it makes sense, you know. Like I'm not even knocking when he's gonna make that announcement. No knock at all, really. Um, good for him. I did a whole show on the on the TV rights deal, so check that out. Um, I think I did that over at Kick Ash Podcast on my YouTube channel. So feel free to check it out there. Um, but yeah, like I was just really, really bummed. Like he they were not even having fun with it, like at least. The absurdity of the angles at least like ham it up and be like be dramatic dude like be like oh god yeah like, what was it the arson the arson from hangman like the week prior he was like yeah i was up all night or i was working tirelessly trying to keep hangman out of jail or something and that was for arson not even a, not even talk about attempted murder and like you didn't have to do anything so like it's it, i know I know this answer, but like, do we care more about property in this country than we do about humans? So it's like, what are we doing, guys? Uh, but I just felt like, again, so much money left on the table and just so much fun that he could have had with it that he did it. And I don't know why. Um, it's like, why even, why, I don't know, like, why even do the interviews and like nothing? It's just kind of frustrating to me. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for checking out the show. I wish we were live here. I miss interacting with you guys in real time. Um, I'm kind of getting that that live itch, you know, like that that bug <laughs> that people say. Um, so it's it's been fun. And again, thank you so much for checking me out here, specifically at Brad Swing Media. I am normally live every Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Again, I will not be live this weekend, but I will be back next weekend here at Brad Swing Media, 10 a.m. Eastern live. So definitely, if you can, swing on over, say what's up, have some morning coffee with us, uh, BS about some wrestling, and and just get ready for the week ahead. Um, be tech. Uh, I think, yeah, that'll be setting up the following week will be the go home week to bad blood. So we'll take a, take a look at that. And then reviewing Grand Slam, seeing what comes out of that. Any new big happenings with Mox. Um, and yeah, I'm going from there. But feel free to follow me on Twitter at A-S-H-M-A-N-N-S, my personal page. You can follow my channel that I have, Kick Ash Podcast, on YouTube. You can follow that on Twitter as well. But yeah, thank you so much for your time, guys. I truly appreciate it. And until next time, stay safe out there and just enjoy some wrestling. Take it easy.